Hello, thanks for tuning in today. This is a tutorial video for principal stresses, principal stresses. We are given a stress cube that has some stresses depicted on it. All of these stresses are in units of KSI, kips per square inch. And what we are asked to do is given this state of stress, given that information, to do not one, but all three more circles. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at an XY plane, more circle, a YZ plane, more circle, and an XZ plane, more circle. Um, we want to get all three of those and make sure we understand um, the three three-dimensional principal stresses. Our deliverable at the end is just doing a uh, stress cube that communicates that information. All right, so we're given this thing. And the first question to ask yourself is, is that state of stress showing the principal stresses? And we can look at each plane to determine that, OK? So if I look at this top plane, is that one oriented to a principal stress? Well, no, because there is a shearing stress in that plane. And we know that principal stresses are defined at locations or at orientations of shear stress equal to zero. Could do the same thing for this near plane. This one happens to be the positive Z. And lo and behold, we've got another shear stress. Um, so we are not at the principal stresses for those planes. But if I come over here to my positive X plane, that's a principal stress. How do I know that? There's no shearing stress on that plane. All right, so I'm going into this problem thinking to myself, OK, I know that this stress is a principal stress, principal stress, and the other two are not. So neither the 18 nor the 6 are principal stresses because I do have shear in the Z, Y plane. Since I have shear in the Z, Y plane, I need to rotate the state of stress about x. Actually, let me draw that in the positive direction, OK? So I want to rotate that stress cube about x until I lock into the other two principal stresses, OK? So again, we've identified 32 as one of the three principal stresses. We've got two more to figure out. And we know that in 3D, we have sigma 1, comma, sigma 2, comma, sigma 3. Those are my three principal stresses. Of those, I know one. I'm looking for the other one. I have to solve for all three before I understand which one this 32 is, because sigma 1 is the most positive, sigma 3 is the most negative, and therefore sigma 2 is the intermediate of the three values. All right, so to get this party started, what I want to do, so if I want to rotate about x, I would like to visualize the z, y plane. I'm going to choose to have y go up. I'm going to choose to have z go that way. OK, so I'm staring into the positive x direction. And I'm kind of standing over here in the negative x direction. Those, so this is me. I'm staring that way. So I see y go straight up. And I see z going to my right. That's the premise here. All right, let's put our stresses in the mix. Uh, y direction, I've got 6 of tension. And these are all KSI. So I'll just do 6 KSI. Z direction, I've got 18 of tension, so we can draw that one too. And then for the shearing stress, here's how I need to think about this. There's my positive Z plane. There's my positive Z plane. And I need a stress that points in the positive Y direction on that plane. So 
there's positive y direction. Once I've got one, I know the other ones. That is a shearing stress of 24 KSI in this orientation. Now I did get a question in office hours. I'm gonna to try to address this really, really quickly. I'm gonna duplicate that layer and then I'm gonna flip it if I can remember how to do that. Okay, I think I wanna flip this, flip layer vertically, mirror layer. Let's see what happens. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so just temporarily, it would be okay to also depict this state of stress by looking at it in the opposite direction. Okay, and all we're doing here is putting Y up, and then this time Z is going to my right. Okay, you can do the mirror images of all of these, but basically um, you could show the same thing, right, just by looking at the mirror image. So if you drew either one of these in 2D, they're both okay to use. I'm going to stick with the original one that I used. All right, we need to get our Moore circle ready for some processing. We got to get rid of that 24 KSI of shear stress to discover our principal stresses. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm label my axes. So I'm going to plot tension to the right, compression to the left. In my vertical axes, I'll do that clockwise shear stress above the sigma axis and a counterclockwise shear stress below the sigma axis. Sign convention kind of feels a little backwards. I recognize that. So you're used to thinking of this as positive and you're used to thinking of things going up as being positive. But as you know, everything with shear, shear force, shear stress, it's always got some trickiness to the sign convention. Let's plot our points. And so I'm gonna choose uh, this face and this face for my two points, okay? And we're used to looking at this in this manner. So we, we would usually plot a point for the positive x face by plotting sigma x comma minus tau xy for that planar stress. And we plot a point for the positive y face sigma y comma positive tau xy. So we're going to do a similar thing for this problem, but instead of having x and y, we have x and z. So I'm just going to modify these equations. So z is over here where we're used to seeing x, see it over there? y is straight up, so I'm just going to change, swap out all of my x's and turn them into z's. Okay, let's go ahead and plot these points. It's okay, I'll leave that layer there. Okay, so let's plot a point for positive z. So I need a positive 18 and a negative 24. I'm going to use this scale, a 6 KSI right there. I'm going to go positive 18 and then a negative 24. That puts me down there. That is my positive Z face. Same thing for my positive Y face. I want to go sigma Y. That's 6. So starting at the origin, I'm going six here, and then I want to increase in the tau direction by 24. So six comma 24 is that ordered pair, and so that puts y up here. Okay, we're going to do a more circle in 2D for the zy plane. And I'm going to sketch in this line. 
and also throw in this right triangle so we'll have it. As you get more experience with more circle and comfortable with it, you can start to skip steps a little bit, but I'll kind of take you through the full thing here. All right, so the first thing we want to do is compute our center. So if we measure from 0, 0 to the center, there's the center of my circle, it is just the average of sigma z and sigma y. So for our scenario, we want to average 6 and 18. They're both tensile. Those average to 12. And so we have a center of 12. Now, of course, we want to show our units when you're doing more circle. You're dealing with all units of stress. So instead of labeling everything with stress, I usually just do a little caveat and say, hey, everything on this plot is all KSI and kind of proceed from there. It's a pretty easy way to communicate that. Next up, we need our radius. So I'm going to look at this right triangle and the height that's equal to my shear stress of 24, if you think of the way we constructed that. Um, and then the base, I'm going to take that dimension. That was my 18 KSI for my positive Z, subtract out the 12. And so this little dimension is going to be equal to 6 KSI. Um, to get my radius of the circle, I'm just going to use Pythagorean theorem. So I want to sum up 6 squared plus 24 squared. Take the root of all of that, and you will get a radius of 24.74. Okay. And oftentimes, I like to write that on my circle. So I'll just write it here, 24.74. I'd like to go from my center, I'd like to go start at my center, and I want to go in all four directions, up, down, left, and right, by the magnitude of my radius. So my first point, 12 plus 24.74, that gets me to 36.74. One, two, three, four, five, 36 point, so about there. Okay. To go up and down to maximum shear stress, I want to increase by the radius. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm a little off of my chart. Sorry about that. That was an accident. Let me look at this one more time and make sure that I'm not goofing. I want to, oh, I'm sorry, not 36, 24. Okay, it will still fit. 24 um, divided by six. So I want to go about four, one, two, three, four, and then just a little change. So that one goes there. Same thing, go down one, two, three, four, and just a little bit of change. And now we've got the top and bottom quadrants. Last but not least, the point to the left, start back at the center. And now I want to decrease by 24. 0.74, so positive 12 minus 24.74, that takes me to negative 12.74, it's about there. I'll dash that more circle in. That is a Mohr circle that represents all stresses that live in the ZY plane for all rotations theta sub x. We use that particular Moore's circle to investigate these stresses. So I've got 18 of the shearing stresses. 
6, 24, all of this stuff. Oops, this one at the bottom too. So all of that stuff, okay. I can use this more circle to achieve what I need to do to figure out my principal stresses, and that is this. I need to go from my native or input stresses all the way to the sigma axis. That's how I can determine my principal stresses. Now, in terms of the notation, those stress ordered pairs that we just established. So ordered pairs, of course, is sigma, comma, tau. Sigma, comma, tau, ordered pairs. That tells us what stresses are happening on all planes when you rotate with respect to the x direction. Let me show you graphically what I'm talking about here. Let me find a good view. Turn that one off. I'm going to have to go with this one. OK. Just rotate this quickly, and then we'll put it right back in place. All right, so all we're doing here is taking this stress element, not zooming, but rather rotating. There we go. And as I change each one of those angles, my static image, of course, is not going to update because this is just a graphics program. But by calculation, all of those stresses will change as I rotate about the x axis, the same x axis that is shown up above. Okay. Let's go back to where we were before that. Okay, this looks pretty good. A little messy, but we're used to that watching my videos, right? Cool. That means we have identified two principal stresses. We have identified this one and this one. And now we can add in this third one. Our third one, sigma x, that is just compressive. Amount is 32. OK, so start back at the center. We want to go. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 32, so about there. OK. Now we can go ahead and label these. One, two, three, those are our three principal stresses. The most positive is sigma one, the most negative, sigma three, and the intermediate is sigma two. Now in this question, we're only asked to determine the 3D principal stresses. So we can state and write that, and I'll do that momentarily. But another question could be, related to maximum and absolute maximum shear stresses. And all that means, I'm going to get a different color, because of course I'm going to get a different color. <laughs> I'm going to hard line this one. OK. like that's a circle. <laughs> okay. So if I were um, looking at maximum shear stress, I would be doing something like this and add another layer here so I can draw underneath. So I'd look at this circle, that circle, the one that I started with, and the third one, which should be circular and not egg-shaped, but what are you going to do, right? All right, let's just answer the, the question that is posed. So we want the 3D principal stresses. Sigma 1 is the most positive. We started at our center, increased by the radius. 12 plus 24.74 is 
3.7 to three sig figs. These are all going to be reported in KSI because they're stresses. Sigma two is this one. So it was our center of 12 minus 24.74. That gives us minus 12. 0.7 KSI to three sig figs. You could also express that as 12.7 KSI of compression if you prefer. And last but not least, sigma three, the most negative. That's the one that we were given as an input. That one was just 32, just 32. How can you illustrate that on a stress cube? Well, you can do this more or less carefully. If you're in my class, all that I would really want to see on the homework problem would be this idea that you've got a random cube at a random orientation. So maybe I will emphasize that and take this cube and just kind of turn it in space. It doesn't really matter. Okay, because we're not going to, I'm not going to label axes on here, but in one direction, you have 36.7 of tension. In another direction, you have 32 of tension. And in another direction, you have 12.7 KSI of compression. And that this is a stress element that illustrates the three principal stresses associated with this input stre stress that included a shear stress that we had to get rid of in order to reveal the principal stresses. Okay. If you wanted to construct this more technically, what you would need to do is calculate this angle. This angle is two theta p. That's going to tell you how much to rotate about x in order to move z to sigma 1, y to sigma 2. Kind of thing it's easier to do in a CAD model than to sketch on uh, on paper. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks for tuning in to this tutorial today and hopefully for the entire semester, whether you're here for my class or maybe you're coming here from a random corner of the internet. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.